Great, and we are live. Hey, hi everyone. Um, thanks for being with us today. It's been a few busy weeks since we last caught up um, on, a, on a Facebook Live webinar. We, we really hope everyone's keeping well, wherever you are in the world. Um, my name is Fabian. I'm a licensed immigration advisor at New Zealand Shores. We also have Julia today. Um, thanks Julia for making time. Julia is also a licensed advisor at New Zealand Shores, connecting from Sunny Nelson at the northern tip of the South Island. And we also have today licensed advisor Charlotte Matouche, who's liaising from our main office in Hamilton, North Island. So essentially today is the opportunity for us to go through a couple of rounds, two rounds of policy changes that were implemented over the last couple of weeks. First, we'll talk about <clears throat> the changes in the way work visa applications are assessed. And then we'll discuss um, Immigration New Zealand, INZ's decision to pause certain types of applications made from offshore and uh, what the process actually entails to make a request for an exemption to try and get a visa regardless. So first off, Julia, what's your take on the last few weeks? How is post-lockdown New Zealand, or can we still call it post-lockdown? Well, if you'd asked me that question yesterday, it would have been a different response, but um, it feels like a bit of an old memory now because daily life had returned to normal, but um, we had no restrictions on our work, our gatherings, uh, domestic travel, schooling, or anything else. And we marked 100 days without community transmission last week. And, and that is a stark contrast with a lot of countries out there where case numbers are still really high. Uh, the economy was doing pretty well and feedback from recruiters is that things are picking up again and we're very busy with people from onshore that are finding jobs or wanting to change jobs or even undertake higher, higher studies in New Zealand and if it wasn't for certain limitations due to our closed borders we'd be absolutely overwhelmed with with stuff so um, it's still New Zealand is a very desirable destination uh, it's still very popular we're finding which is good uh, but last night we had uh, four new cases in Auckland flare up and the government has now decided to act, go hard and go strong, as Jacinda Ardern would say, uh, which means Auckland is going back into a three day lockdown at level three. And that means that Auckland does, are now having to stay at home. Um, and we're fortunate enough in the rest of the country to be at level two. So at the moment it's restricted to just Auckland region being at level three lockdown. So the rest of us have to be back to being vigilant with uh, personal hygiene and um, social distancing, but no strict restri restrictions for the rest of us just yet. Right, so essentially outside of Auckland, still fairly normal. We're pretty normal, yeah. How, how about behind the scenes, um, Charlotte, with Immigration New Zealand more specifically, any updates? Yeah, so everything onshore is ticking along um, as per usual, effectively. Um, if you are in New Zealand and you're applying for variation of conditions or a new visa or residence, um, things are pretty much as per usual. Um, the only thing that is still on hold is the EOI pool for the skilled migrant category, but um, hopefully post-election we have some kind of update on that. Um, in, in regards to the skilled migrant category, um, the residence queue for prioritised applications, we're seeing a lot of movement, we're getting a lot of applications processed through that um, queue, but the standard regular applications are still, you know, processing around that 18 months time frame. So, um, yeah, a lot of movement um, across the board, partnership applications. Uh, for partners of New Zealand citizens and residents are also ticking along um, because, of course, they are, are a group who are exempt to the current um, border controls. They can still enter, so they're processing completely as usual as well at our Hamilton branch. Right, so thank you for that. To the matter at hand, um, policy change. Let's get a, a little technical here. We had policy changes on, on just that one essential skills work visa category, effective 27th of July. What's involved and who does it affect? Well, essentially that's a technical change and it slightly changes the process of assessing a work visa under essential skills category only. Uh, historically, the ANSCO has been used to assess the skill level um, and give you the validity of your visa, but now it's purely down to how much you're earning. Uh, so basically, it was down to be offered less or more than the New Zealand median wage, which is currently sitting at 25.50 an hour. If you're offered less than that, you may get a six-month visa, which is renewable several times 
up to a three years total stay. But before they can hire you, your New Zealand employer will also need to get feedback from the Ministry of Social Development as to the availability of New Zealanders to fill that position. Um, if you're offered at or above the 25.50 an hour, you may get the three year visa and the labour market test is, as we call it, primarily relies on advertising evidence such as Trade Me or Seek, uh, rather than direct feedback from the government authorities. Uh, this is meant to protect Kiwi jobs over the next 18 months as the COVID crisis was expected to impact employment rates. Um, so it's, it's always putting Kiwis first. Um, it's as it was pre-COVID, it's just a little bit more uh, enforced post-COVID. Right, so are you saying the COVID crisis was expected to impact employment rates, so it hasn't? Well, Statistics New, Ze New Zealand just released figures showing that unemployment has in fact continued to drop despite the COVID crisis from 4.2% in March to just 4% in June, uh, but that's really an effect of the job market slowing down overall. Um, we, can, we can say that unemployment has been relatively stable and at a very low figure, and it's, and it's consistently been going down since 2009, still keeping this trend. Okay, so what I say from this is for essential skills work visa, the salary you offer, the hourly rate you offer, determines the duration of your visa. Are there any other consequences that are subject to this hourly rate, or is that just a duration of the visa? Shall yeah, I? so if you get paid under the medium wage, so if you get paid under 25.50 per hour, um, you can't sponsor your partner for a open partnership work visa. Your partner can still obtain a visitor visa, um, which would be issued for nine months. Um, your partner would be able to come and secure work in their own right and then apply for their own visa as well. Um, one major change that has taken place, which is actually a benefit to people, is the fact that... Um, Previously, if you were in that low skilled range, your children couldn't attend school as domestic students, but they've um, changed that and now all de uh, dependent children, irrespective of whether uh, the parent is earning 25.50 um, or higher or below, um, all children are able to attend school as domestic students. Cool. Thank you. So to sum things up, essentially this policy change only impacts essential skills work visas, not the talent visa, not specific purpose visa or any other work visa category. And the salary offered determines the duration of the visa, but also the need for the employer to advertise and how to do so, and the kind of visas that the family can apply for. So that's the one initial policy change. Now to the next one, um, some changes were implemented last Monday, so a few days ago. Um, has ONZ really suspended certain types of visa applications? Is that a major change, Charlotte? So not really. Um, first off, there are a number of visa categories that have not been affected. Um, so if you are in New Zealand, there's absolutely no change to the visas you can apply for. Um, visas for people onshore are processing as per usual. Um, if you are overseas and applying as the partner of a New Zealander, um, whether that's a citizen or a resident, this remains open for submissions as well. Um, as I said earlier, they are a group who are exempt from the current um, border restrictions. Um, and if you are overseas and applying for um, residents under any of the residence categories, applications remain open. Um, the other thing to note is that even though they've stopped um, temporary visa applications for the majority of people offshore is that these actually haven't processed since uh, the country went into lockdown and the border closed um, in March. So really this change is just to make sure that um, while we get through the next few months with COVID and while the government is working, I guess, through those border restriction policies, um, that there isn't a massive backlog um, occurring for immigration New Zealand. Right, okay, so why that decision essentially, um, Julia? Is that a big shift in ONZ strategy or is it like Charlotte said, it's just a formality? Yeah, exactly. It's, it is just formalizing something that was already happening in the background for quite some time. After the border restrictions got put in place, INZ declared that they would not be processing offshore applications. Uh, but there were people able to submit an application and get in a queue and temporary change is meant to pause this ability for now, uh, which would give INZ some time to get a better idea of what's, what the next quarter is going to look like. And at the same time, we hope to clear the massive backlog of applications that's built up. It's, uh, 
you know, it's, it's getting quite large there. I mean, just for international student visa applications, they're sitting on a pile of about six and a half thousand applications. So that's quite a lot of uh, people waiting. They certainly do keep busy. Yeah. Um, so is that it? If I get a job, so let's say I'm offshore, I get offered a job from a New Zealand company. Can I get a work visa at all? It really depends on um, what type of job offer you've got. So there are some exceptions to the current border restrictions. Um, once again, if you are the partner of a New Zealand citizen or resident, um, if you are a critical worker, um, the majority of those critical workers currently are health care workers, doctors, nurses, um, you know, there's a whole list that immigration has for you. Um, or whether you are a critical worker for one of the government's um, infrastructure projects. So there is a big list of pre-approved infrastructure projects. And if you are on um, working on one of those projects, you are still exempt to the border restrictions. Um, there is some criteria in addition to that. Um, you know, if you have a highly specialist and your skills absolutely aren't available anywhere in New Zealand, um, or if the company that has hired you can demonstrate a really huge impact to the local um, or national economy, um, then there is the ability to apply for an exemption. Um, but yeah, they have also just added a fee to that. So it's $45 for healthcare workers um, and 380 for other critical workers. So it, it's not something that we would just submit, um, you know, just to see what happens. Not anymore. Yeah, that's probably Not why anymore. they produce yeah. the fee, because they get completely swamped. Um, so essentially, if you believe you meet the criteria, um, get in touch with us. We'll try and facilitate that request. If the request is approved, uh, you might be invited to apply for a visa or um, apply for a variation of conditions on your visa if you have an application pending and, and, and stuck. Already. So we know that this um, pause is by definition temporary, but when are they looking at reopening again? Julia, what do you think? Well, they're saying it's meant to be for three months. So by 9th of November 2020, we should be back to normal. Uh, but I mean, anything can change because we've got an election hopefully on the 19th of September, and the results of that may prompt earlier decisions. So we've had encouraging signs from the Prime Minister over the weekend who's looking at increasing our quarantine capabilities as a matter of priority so that we can allow more skilled workers to enter the country. Uh, the global health crisis is not changing anything to the fact that New Zealand heavily relies on skilled, skilled workers and we need them back. So if, if that can be put into place, then um, things can, you know, people can start to enter the country again. Mm, right. So just digressing a little bit, and I guess um, as a conclusion, have we have we heard anything um, on when the skilled migrant EOR draws were going to resume? We, we can still submit, and we have been submitting many EORs because the pool remains open, but the selection's on hold. So Charlotte, have you got any insights on this? No insights. This is probably a question I answer about 10, 10 times a day at the moment. Um, we don't know. We don't get any insider information as much as we would love to. So we are also very much in the dark. It's another change that immigration has promised is temporary, um, but that has been on hold effectively since the start of April. So yeah, once again, post-election, I think we'll start seeing more movement on things, hopefully. Um, or like Julia said, earlier decisions could be made because of the election. So it is just a big wait and see game at the moment. But if you are onshore and you are eligible for residence, um, we are still recommending that people do submit their EOIs so that when the pool resumes, um, you know, you'll be invited to apply under that first selection. Right. Well, if anyone has any questions, um, please send us a line, info at newzealandshores.com. Info is I-N-F-O or give us a call on 07929228 or if you're unsure or even if you're offshore, um, the country code is plus six four. Thanks a lot, um, both of you, um, Julia and Charlotte, and thanks everyone for watching. We'll keep you posted when there are more developments in New Zealand immigration. So um, like our Facebook page and keep posted on the next ones. Thank you.